Preventing TCP sin flood attacks. If it's true that prevention is the best cure, then we should really never allow a TCP sin flood attack to reach our critical servers. In this micro nugget, we'll take a look at exactly what a TCP sin flood attack is and how to stop it before it reaches those servers. Let's jump in. In this micro nugget, our objective is to identify what is a sin flood attack, how we can train the ASA to step in so that our server doesn't take the brunt of it, and then implement it and test it and see that it's working. So it's best to first understand what exactly is a sin flood attack. Well, in a normal environment, if we have a client, let's say the client's right here, and we have a server down here, the client will send something called a TCP synchronization request saying, I'd like to talk to you. And the server sends a packet back saying, sure, I'd like to talk to you too. It's called a sin ACK. And what it really is, it's an acknowledgement of the initial synchronization request plus its own synchronization request to which is followed a final packet that comes back, which is the ACK from the client. So a sin, sin ACK, and ACK, three packets of the three-way handshake. That's what normally takes place. Now in a malicious environment, if a client sent a TCP sin request, it could lie about the source address. So now I'm going to lie and say this is from, from 23.1.2.3 or some other random address and it's not really his address. That packet goes to the server. The server is now replying to the bogus address. There's not going to be a response plus this guy right here is also a victim because he's receiving all these TCP synacts that he never requested in the first place. So what does that harm the server? So what? A little synac here and there, how's that really going to be a bad deal? What if we send thousands of these or hundreds of thousands of TCP SYN requests? We could tie up the resources while this server is looking off the horizon and waiting for that final packet to come in and potentially take that server out of business. To solve this, we can have the ASA step in and say, I am not going to tolerate that many half form sessions going to this DMZ server. Instead, what I'll do is I'll set a threshold. Let's set a threshold for them. Let's say the threshold is five. If there's more than five half open TCP sessions, they sometimes call it an embryonic session, what we want you to do, Mr. ASA, is instead of allowing those requests to make it to the server, once it gets above the threshold of five, you start go ahead and intercepting those TCP SYN requests. You're basically going to lie on behalf of the server. So now, new clients, whether they're malicious or not, if we've already reached the maximum of five concurrent TCP half form sessions, new clients that come in are going to do the TCP request. The ASA is going to do the response on behalf of the server. And if the client is valid and does the final acknowledgement, then the ASA says, oh my goodness, it's a valid connection. It turns around and builds its own three-way handshake with the server and knits the sessions together. In effect, we set a threshold at the ASA. Once it's exceeded, the ASA begins to do the intercept to take the offload from the server itself. Now, just to be clear, in this demonstration, I'm, a, I'm on a closed track. I'm not going to cause any traffic to go out to the internet. So when we do our SYN flood attack, I'm going to spoof my source address, but I'm going to spoof it back to an address on this network. I'm not going to let it do it random where it would spoof back to a valid IP address on the internet. So having said that, let's bring in the ASA. And on the ASA, it can show us exactly what current sessions are in place with the show con command. If we want to delete those, we can do a clear connections and then a show. We have no active connections in use at the moment. So we're going to take a client on my outside network and this is a backtrack distribution and I'm running the Metasploit framework inside of that and I've got it set up to do a SYN flood and I've told it that I want to attack this address which is the mapped address for my internal server. I've told it I want to go to the port 80 which is open. I also want to spoof using the source address of this address right there. That way it's not going to be re replied to back to the internet. So currently, there's no protection as far as the SYN flood protection implemented at the ASA. So I'm going to just say run, and now the attack is flying. So as it flies in the background, if we do a show con now, you know, so in fact, we're never going to catch up to it. There's thousands of them. So we can do a show con count, and there's 3,276 half form sessions, and the number is growing, <laughs> and it's growing. And it's growing. So we can let that go on for a while. But the bad news is, is that little teeny HTTP server on the DMZ is trying to respond to all these. And he's just getting worn out. So to solve that problem, I'm going to stop the attack with Metasploit for a moment, tell it to stop. To stop the attack from happening, what we're going to do is we're going to implement the limit and say, you know what, Mr. ASA, once we get to five half form sessions that are going to this server, go ahead and you step in 
and don't allow the additional connections to go through unless they're valid clients that completed the three-way handshake. We could do that from ASDM. We could also do it from the command line interface. I think for this demonstration, we'll do it from the command line interface. Let's do that right now. To implement the policy on the ASA, we're going to use the modular policy framework, which is really sweet. It takes class maps to identify traffic. In this case, we have a class map called traffic to DMZ server that if matched means it's traffic that's headed towards the DMZ server. Second thing we do is create a policy map. In this policy map, we're leveraging the global policy and we're saying, you know what? If traffic matches this class called traffic to DMZ server, go ahead and set the embryonic connection maximum to five. And if the traffic exceeds that, then the TCP intercept, intercept kicks in and that's it. So if we do that same attack again against the server, we'll bring in backtrack again and we'll launch the attack. We'll just do a run. So the attack is running and then we'll bring up the console one more time from the ASA and we'll do a show con. Now we have five. Now these are five half form sessions that are currently in place. And if there's any more than that, the TCP intercept function on the ASA is taking care of it. So our little humble HTTP server sitting there on the DMZ only has to deal with five half form sessions at a time. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at not only what is a sin flood attack, but we've also identified why it's harmful to a server as it ties up all its resources. We also took a look at how to stop it by telling the ASA to simply set a threshold. And once that threshold is exceeded, to go ahead and start doing TCP intercept. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.